was an open assignment on something that at the time was called Blood Buddy. They hired me. They hired me to do a rewrite on the project, which at the time had gone through some rewrites with Tom Holland, who had failed, and they had gotten rid of him. And this was kind of like the last go-around they were going to do. They hired me, and I went home, and I started writing. And uh, eventually, I came up with a draft, and we turned it into the studio. And the next day, they called and said, the project is greenlit. And that's, that's how I got involved with the first one. Before I started recording, it stormed really loud. And it was just like, wow, it's kind of weird how I'm uh, you know, talking about, you know, Basically the guy that helped make it Chucky famous and it's lightning outside. You know, like a sign maybe, I don't know. Uh, but this isn't going to be a very long video. I'm also not going to monetize this video because I do want to pay respects to um, John and his family. And I just really wanted to do this just to kind of spread the word, let people know. I did post a lot about this on my Instagram. If something like this would have happened, you want it like right away. Like I, I'm pretty good at getting it out pretty fast, but um... I just want to kind of like, you know, talk about John, you know, read an article that they released, kind of let, let you guys know exactly who he is and why he was so important uh, to the Chucky uh, community. So, Child's Play co-screenwriter John Lafia, I hope I'm saying that right, dies at 63. Uh, he did die from suicide. Uh, some people were telling me that he had depression. He was battling depression and she, I was talking to someone else about this and they're like damn bro he was so close to the finish line like you know he was so you know how come you know it just had to happen this late you know I've, I've never like really heard of someone this old I guess like you know doing something like this so when I like heard about this it's, it's not only disheartening and sad that we lost someone so important to the franchise but the way that it happened too it, it's just it's crazy man i went on and wrote and directed my own film the blue iguana for paramount and david saw that and they hired me to get involved as a director for child's play too that's how i got involved with the franchise the origin of the name chucky is i had been talking to david and he wanted to give the doll, which in the original draft did not have a backstory. He wanted to give it a backstory of being a serial killer. And I think David already had the name Charles in mind. I could be wrong, um, but I think he did. Like as Charles Lee Ray using you know a variety of names that certain mass killers or serial killers really had in the U.S. in, in the past. I was writing it, and I realized that the boy... Um, who I actually had called Martin, but became Andy, had to address his doll. And I just really could not work with the idea that he would call his doll Charles. It seemed really stupid. Charlie seemed really dated. And just literally, I was thinking about it. I don't know, maybe I was walking, and all of a sudden it popped into my head that Chuck is actually... a uh, a nickname or a derivation of Charles and suddenly the word Chucky popped into my head and I just instantly I mean the second that popped into my head I knew it was right I thought oh this is so perfect Lafia collaborated with Tom Holland and Don Mancini on a horror movie screenplay and was credited with coning the name quote Chucky so basically he's credited with helping make the name Chucky and contributed the famous line and I quote, hi, I'm Chucky, want to play? So he's also the reason that we got the famous line, hi, I'm Chucky, want to play? So already this dude is, he's pretty damn important. If, you're, if you've never, if you don't really know who he is or if you're a Chucky fan, if you're not too familiar with the people who co-write the movies and everything. You don't really care about all this. This is, um, already he's, uh, you know. In 1988, the original Child's Play went on the top the box office and received the Saturn Award for Best Horror Film. As well as a nomination for Best Writing, he also received a writing credit on the Child's Play 2019 remake. That's crazy. So the guy who drew, who, uh, who directed, uh, who got the name Chucky, who made Hi I'm Chucky Wanna Play, did all of these amazing achievements in the, into this character 
and he also worked on the Child's Play 2019 remake, which, in my opinion, is one of the best horror remakes that we've gotten. He So he helped make the Child's Play 2019 remake as good as it was. So I realized the doll only could have so many responses, particularly, again, you gotta realize this is in the, in the late 80s, the technology was very limited. So I figured I had to come up with four or five just key phrases that the doll would just say, but that could be interpreted in different ways depending on the circumstances. And so one of them was, hi, I'm Chucky, you wanna play? Another one was, I'll be your friend to the end, which I thought I could do something with. And I did later on, I gave Andy the line, um, this is the end, friend. There was another one, uh, I like to be hugged, which often can be used for irony if Chucky says that. Uh, so just things like that. There's a few couple more lines that have uh, become rather well known, but I just can't think of them all. Charles Play creator and screenwriter Don Mancini said in a statement provided by Lafayette's family, and I quote, we're devastated to hear of the passing of our friend John Lafayette. He was a crucial part of the, quote, Chucky family from the very beginning. He co-wrote the original Child's Play script along with director Tom Holland and myself, and John directed, quote, Child's Play 2, uh, the favorite film among Chucky fans. John was an incredibly generous artist. He let me tag along with him to every meeting and shadow him on set. He taught me more about filmmaking during the production of that movie than several semesters in film school. John was also one of the most naturally curious and constantly creative people I met, ever met. Well, I mean, look at, like, hi, I'm Chucky, want to play, like, like, come on now. Uh, someone who was always taking pictures and jotting down ideas. I always felt that the script that I had done, the draft, was actually better than the one that Tom Holland eventually shot. Um, I felt like he changed a lot of things in the story just to try to get a bigger credit. And there were a lot of scenes that I had written that were taken out of my draft. And when Child's Play 2 came around, it's there are three or four scenes that I had had in Child's Play 1, my draft, that basically made their way into Child's Play 2. So when my opportunity came to do Child's Play 2, and then it was also my decision with David to bring Don back into the franchise, because I had become friends with him at the time, and I, I just really liked him. You know, and I felt he had a lot to offer. According to the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office, the cause of death was suicide. Lafayette was born in 1957 and received a BAF, uh, I mean a BFA in motion picture and television from UCLA. I don't exactly know what all that means, but I'm going to guess it's important. Uh, he worked in the art art department on Alex Culp's Wopo Man and Space Raiders from moving into screenwriting. His first major credit was 1988's Blue Lagoon. Uh, I think it's the blue iguana, uh, an action film starring someone who, which he wrote and directed in addition to producing his soundtrack, the blue iguana was selected for a midnight showing official. Uh, he wrote and directed the science fiction film Man's Best Friend, which debated at number two at the box office. Lafia also wrote and directed and produced the TV miniseries 10.5 in 2004 and its spinoff 10.5 Apocalypse in 2006. His other uh, directing credits include the TV series Freddy's Nightmares, TV movie The Rats, and the live-action video game Corpse Killer. Lafayette's last project was the TV movie Firestorm Last Stand at Yellowstone in 2006. I always felt we could do better than the first one, so maybe it was my youth, but I felt competition with the first one in a good way. Like, I was going to do my take on this story that was not necessarily related to his. That's one of the reasons... Catherine Hicks did not come back. It had nothing to do with her as an actress. It just was, I didn't want that character to come back. One of the things I felt, and it probably was right for Child's Play 1, was that it, that was really shot from an adult's point of view. It was more Catherine Hicks' point of view. And I really, really, in number two, was committed to the idea of shooting it from Andy's point of view and Chucky's. Because of that, I have a lot of people approach me who saw it as a child, and it seems to have really stuck in their brain, and that's probably why I shot a lot of the film from very low angles, very wide lenses, which I remember being a kid, that's how the world looked to me. And a lot of bright colors. The whole factory scene in the end to me is something, it doesn't look like a real factory. It looks like 
Willy Wonka, you know, which was something that I also felt was unique in a horror film. I thought, why, why does it have to be this dark and gloomy place? It can be just as terrifying if it's got amusement park color. In 2012, Lafayette released his passion project, a musical drama he wrote, directed, shot, and edited, The Ballad of Frank and Cora. Uh, he also co-produced the soundtrack with musician Bill Jones. After starring in LA's underground music scene in the 1980s, he returned to composing and recording and released a double album, John Lafayette, 1980 through 1985 and 2019. He is survived by his children, Tess and Kane, and his former life, Beverly. So that was John Lavia. So man, it, it really sucks that this happened to you, because imagine if he helped on the TV series. He could have came on and directed an episode that feels like Charles Play 2, but also feels like the remake put together. That would have been amazing. The story was like, all right, you know, it wasn't like really a bad remake, honestly. You know, it had its flaws, but it was okay. But he contributed to make that better. So imagine if he wasn't on. I just want to thank him. I think everyone, especially in the Chucky community, should thank this man for bringing us the the good guy that we know and love today. R.I.P. the John, I hope he, you know... If he was battling depression, and it's all over now at least. So having this happen, I, I even treated a dom, and uh, I even told him, bro, like, you, you have to go hard on this TV series now. You you have to, like, you know, like, I feel like maybe now he has a little bit of pressure to make the TV show great in honor of him, you know, like, because that's what John would want, you know, he, he wants the legacy of Chucky to go on, you know. Even though John is not here with us anymore, I know that he's looking down on us. Because you can't keep a good guy down. The star of Child's Play 1 turned out to be Chucky. And I was very aware of that in Child's Play 2, that this is the star. And a lot of effort was put into the puppetry. A lot of effort. Another thing is the first one used a little person for a lot of the shots and I was committed that I was not going to do that. Every single shot in Child's Play 2 is done with an actual puppet. We went over budget and I got beat up for that but I was really committed. The shot where Miss Kettlewell, where the, Chucky comes out of the closet and says you've been very naughty Miss Kettlewell that took an entire day to shoot because at the time we didn't have the technology to digitally erase cables and other things and we had to build a closet put clothes in on the other side of that closet is a long boom hidden behind chucky's back and uh there's you know 10 guys on the other side of that wall wearing masks and gears and operating this thing and they can't see it and you know that puppet would often just screw up over and over and over again so to get all the movements and the voice coordinated took an enormous amount of time but again I was just really committed that having a shot like that to really sell the dolls being real was just critical I believe on the set of the first one they had just someone reading the lines and then um, Brad dubbed it after the fact but that's problematic because to get the lips to sync correctly, the, the, I think it was problematic. So I think they figured out that the best way to do it would be to have Brad record the dialogue and play it back on set. And then the puppeteers would batch that dialogue. So when you're shooting it, it's actually the words. And I think at some point I just had to come to terms with the idea that this, this creation was going to outlive me. And that's a strange thing, you know. I mean, I guess it's kind of what I always wanted when I was a kid. Seeing an old girlfriend around all the time. <laughs> you know, someone you've had a very deep romance with at one point.